editing portraits inside of On One Photo Raw is one of my favorite things to do. And today we're going to edit a portrait of a model using On One Photo Raw and hopefully to extract some of the color out of this image. Let's go ahead and jump into the computer and get started. Here is the image straight out of camera. I haven't done anything to it. So if I go ahead and hold the backslash key, I guess that's not entirely true. I got rid of the light in the upper left corner just because it was a distraction and it doesn't need to be there. But other than that, I haven't done any editing to this image. Now, one of the things that I want to do is you can see there's like this magenta light that's kind of going over the back right side of the model here. And I realize it's not entirely in focus. Don't hold that against me, but Either way, we're going to have some fun with this image. All right. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, manage the camera profile. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the camera profile. And I was playing around in here a little bit. Usually what I do is I just hit the down arrow and I cycle through these. But the camera profile that I think is going to work the best for me today is camera standard. Now, the reason why I say that is because I'm also going to reduce the exposure. I want to bring this down probably about a stop and a half, right? It's going to look really dark right now, and that's further than a stop and a half. We'll go 1.7. Uh, it's going to look really dark right now, but in my mind, what I'm going to do is open this up using the local adjustment tab. And so I'm just trying to get my my base canvas set the way that I want it to be, uh, because then we'll do some dodging and burning, but it's a lot easier to bring back the natural brightness in an image with the local adjustment than it is to use the exposure slider to increase the exposure uh, beyond what was already in the image, right? And that's also how you sometimes end up with clipping. So that's the reason why I do it this way. All right. Um, but the other thing that I want to do is I want to give this a little bit more color. All right. So I'm going to come to the color tab here inside of tone and color, and I'm going to give this some vibrance. And what that does is it just kind of opens up the color palette for me to work with, especially if I want to go throw a color enhancer on there. And that's the main reason why I do this, but that's about all that I think I need to do. So here's the before straight out of camera. And here's where we've gotten so far. And in many cases, I would say that this is a great photo. Like if I wanted to deliver something to the client, if this were my client, this was just a model at the build expo. And if I do have her information, I'll be sure to link it in the description box. Cause you know, I want to give everybody credit where credit is due. Um, but with that being said, it's time to jump into local. So over here in local, if I hit add adjustment, uh, the first thing that I want to do is start to work with her as the individual. Um, so we'll just go ahead and increase the exposure here. Now, the difference of what I'm doing versus if I had never, if I had left the image this bright and then I tried to manage the overall uh, tonality, I would lose a lot of information because it, it just makes it a little bit harder. So I like to darken the image first and then increase using the exposure slider. I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter W on my keyboard to get the masking uh, quick brush AI tool. This is by far one of my favorite masking tools inside of on one. And if you're wondering like, Hey, Chris, why haven't you done a dedicated masking video? Uh, the reason for that is honestly, I use this quick mask AI brush for pretty much every edit. And then I go in and maybe modify, uh, other aspects. So that's the reason why I haven't done a particular, uh, tutorial, but you know, I, I will do one because I know a lot of people want to see that. So, uh, let me just see if I can select her completely. And, you know, I think this is actually good right here because I don't now nah, I'll select her entire uh, body or at least as much of it as I can with this tool. And I don't need like the best selection here because I'm not doing like drastic editing. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this in. 
And you'll see that she's going to get a little bit brighter, which is going to help her pop off the background. And that's perfect. It's a very minor adjustment, but it does make a huge difference in the ability to kind of sculpt this color and light that's coming in. And you'll see that here in a little bit. So the next thing that I probably want to do is open up a little bit more of the light in her skin. So we'll go ahead and rename this and we'll just call this whole body. And then I'm going to hit add adjustment, hit the letter W again. We'll select her skin this time. And on one did a pretty good job there at grabbing just the skin. It did go over her eyes as well. So I could paint that away if it becomes an issue. Um, but for the most part, that skin adjustment uh, did a pretty good job there. I don't want negative exposure. For this one, I'm going to go with opening the shadows. And what that, what that does is, one, it makes everything that isn't the clothing that much brighter. So we're creating more tonal separation. And this is really important for uh, creating dynamic images with depth and contrast. Um, and things that look more 3D and they pop off the uh, back or pop off the photo or pop out the frame. I think that's what I want to say. So this one we'll just call skin bright. And I think that that's pretty good right there. And so the last thing that I'll do before we jump over into effects is I want to modify her eyes. Now, I know that I didn't get the eyes in focus. So. This is kind of my way of working with the eyes to help get them a little bit more in focus. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to paint right over the eyes just like this. And I, I leave it on negative exposure for the first uh, pass when I do this, just because it helps me see where I'm painting to make sure that I got everything that I wanted. And then I'll come back over here to tone, reset that. And I actually have a brush for eyes. So to activate that brush, I'm going to click on styles and then I'm going to click on more. All of my brushes are going to pop up, but the one that I care about is going to be eye details. And then I also have one for whites of the eye. So I'm going to start with whites of the eye, open that up. And if I turn this off and turn it on, you can see it's very subtle, but it does the job that I needed to. And if I want to increase that just a bit, I can, but I try not to overdo it because if you overdo it, then the eyes just look really weird and uh, kind of zoned out. All right. So if I hit command and zero and zoom out and then I turn this off and turn it on, that's definitely overdoing it. But the beauty of on one is we have this opacity slider. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull that down to about here. And that looks more natural and appropriate for this particular image. Could probably come down a little bit more as well. So I think we'll go right around there and call it good. And we'll just call this eyes. All right. So now it's time to kind of work with this pink uh, magenta color that's happening in the image. And I want to really accent this color and play off of it. So I'm going to use a photo filter to start off with. All right. And if you've never used the photo filter tool, this tool is a lot of fun to play with. Um, but I need to get the color that is in the image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the color here. Uh, the color square, I should say, I'm going to grab my eye picker tool and I'm going to come and get the color off of her cheek because I want to match more to the skin. I don't really care what's happening with the backdrop. The skin is what's brighter uh, right now in the image. And that's why I want to sample off of her skin. So I'm just going to go ahead and click right around here. And now I have the same color on the photo filter. And I very much could have done this exact same editing technique that I'm about to do using the local adjustments with paint with color, but I want to use the photo filter because I get a few more options that I don't have available to me. Uh, one of those being the polarizer, the other being the, uh, the mode directly in 
the filter itself. I could use the blending up here if I wanted to, but that is outside of where I want to go. All right. So what am I going to do here? I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter M and grab the masking bug. And I'm just going to uh, change this to linear left and then click. And if I hit the letter O, you can see that light is coming from the camera right or the model's left side, and it's hitting her cheek over here. So I wanna make this light more impacted on this side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the letter M, come over here, all right. And I'm going to fade this a little bit better, all right. So now that I have that going, I'm just gonna go ahead and increase the amount you'll see that it's darkening the background. We're going to deal with that here in a second. And what I probably should have done was select my model using the quick mask brush first. So let's just go ahead and do that. I'll select her skin because that's really, and I guess I'll get the back part of her uh, blazer here. We'll, we'll go like this. I think that that's enough. Those are the areas that I care for this color to go into. And then I'll hit paint because I want the effect to be in those areas. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit the letter M. And this time we'll go ahead and let's go. I think I need right. There we go. Hit M and letter O. All right. So. It's doing the opposite of what I wanted to do. So I'm just going to go ahead and rotate that around like so. And you can see when you select the subject using the AI mask, you can kind of taper your effect. I've demonstrated this many times throughout the month. Uh, this is one of my favorite editing techniques to really control and sculpt light and uh, the mask. So let's go ahead and turn this off, turn it back on and that may or may not be working the way that I want it to, but we'll go with it for now. So now that I have the photo filter uh, and hmm, now I'm starting to think, do I want this to be more robust in the image? And I don't think I do. I think I'm just gonna, I'm gonna roll with it like it is. Uh, but I think this image could use a complementary color. So let's go ahead and add in another photo filter. Let's open up our color here. And I'm just going to sample our pink or magenta. And that's over here. So that means green looks like it's going to be the complementary color that I want. So I'm just going to click somewhere over here. You can see what it's doing to the overall image. Maybe we'll make it a little bit brighter. I'm going to remove it from her skin using our handy dandy AI brush. So just hover over her skin, click there. And this time I want to erase. So we'll click there, erase it, and we'll see that go away from her skin, but it stays in the background, which I think is cool. And then I'm gonna hit the letter M on my keyboard to get the masking bug. And I'm just gonna click right over here on about this side. So now I have this magenta on the right side of my image, not touching her skin. And then I have a green over here on the left side. So I'll just pull this out. And I'll even rotate this because I think that that would be kind of cool. I don't know if that's really doing much of anything there, uh, but I can increase this and you can see now I'm getting this uh, complimentary magenta and green look. So now that I have two photo filters, it's time to kind of make this stand out maybe a little bit more. And this is where I like to play with the bleach bypass. So we'll go ahead and add that in. And this is probably way too strong. So let's see if we can kind of tame this with a blend mode. And maybe using, maybe we'll go with soft light. Yeah. So we're gonna go with soft light. And for whatever reason, that didn't save. 
So let's just go back, soft light. And this is a contrasted type of blend mode. So it is a little too strong and you could just back it off using the opacity slider. But I really like what I'm getting here. So uh, her hair is probably a little dark. So we can go into the local, hit add adjustment, hit the W key because we did get a good selection of her hair the last time. I'll just click that. We'll paint this in. And then what I'm gonna do is open up the shadows on her hair, and maybe even expose it just a little bit. So that way we get some detail in there. Pull down on the blacks, give it some structure. And yeah, I think that that looks pretty good for you know just messing around, seeing what we can get inside of on one. I think that this looks pretty good. So here's the before image. And here is the final look that I think I'll, I'll run with. You let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section. I could sit here and experiment with this photo from, uh, for, for hours, uh, just to try and figure out something that I really, really like, but I just wanted to play with those colors a little bit and make her stand out and be a little bit more prominent in the frame. So if you found value, smash the like button. If you want to learn more about using all one photo raw, go ahead and click the video that's popping up on screen now, or you can consider signing up for a coaching call with me. Link for that is in the description box below. Until next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.